The trial of Karen Reed continuing on. We're hearing lots of witness testimony from that fateful night where John O'Keefe lost his life in front of the Elbert's house. But how did he lose his life? Was he hit by Karen Reed? Was he in a fight in the house? Did he just slip and fall and hit his head? Or what happened? Nobody knows the answer to that, and I don't know that we ever truly will. Joining me to discuss the last week of uh, testimony in the case, Robin Dreek, retired FBI special agent. Robin, I got some interesting audio to play here from the past week, but I want to get uh, your take on what we've seen since we last talked. I think our arc of everything we're seeing is remaining solid. I mean, we're, we just don't quite get the charges. It, they keep go, trying to go out of their way to show an unhealthy relationship between the two, and there's vendettas. I mean, I'm just not buying it. I just don't see what they're trying to do here, and I just don't think it's going to hold up with the jury. Well, we'll I mean, we'll see, but yeah. I just I don't like the charges at all. I feel like both narratives don't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, don't. at least in terms of it being an intentional act of murder. Uh, I think he could have gotten hit, but I don't think it was intentional. And I, I don't think she even realized she did it if she did it. Yeah, I'm totally with you on that. I'm not buying the intention and I'm not buying the motive for the intention. It just doesn't hold up um, to anything we're seeing. It looks like a relationship but it doesn't look like a relationship that's that deviates from anyone else's arc. I mean, people have moments of challenging, stressful arguments, and people don't. Mm -hmm. The night of the event, it looked like everything was pretty copacetic. The only thing that I think we keep going back, at least I keep going back to, is there's way too much alcohol consumed yep. to do a, a good service to anyone in this situation and to try to get testimony from people that can barely remember their names at night i think is mm -hmm. just doing everyone a disservice what do you think about the arguments that we've been hearing about oh there's so much inconsistency with the testimonies i, I, I the way i'm looking at it is yeah they're all individual people they all had their mm -hmm. individual path that night they were all individually drinking so yeah not everybody's going to pick up on the exact same things at, at the same time uh but that seems to be kind of a point of contention that uh, the defense of karen reed continues to bring up Going, well, they didn't say that. Well, yeah, ask anybody, do any event in life, and not everybody's going to have the same, uh, the same outlook on, on what took place. So it's, it's a great question. So, and, and literally, I love it when you say things I haven't thought of before, because I'm going to give you exactly what popped in my mind yeah. when you said that as a behaviorist. Mm -hmm. So when you have a lot of differing testimonies coming in and none, none of it's coalescing, well, what are they trying to coalesce around? They're trying to coalesce around what did you see between um, the defendant and, you know, well, between Karen and um, John. And the fact that it's all over the place is saying what? That their behavior between those two wasn't so egregious and out of their norm that everyone was focused on watching it. Mm hmm yeah. So, so in other words, everyone, like you just said, everyone was doing their own thing because doing their own thing. I mean, we are genetically and biologically very self-centered to focus and care about the things that we care about in the moment. Sure. And we have peripheral noise around us if we're socializing, engaging one on one. But we all have a different individual context of what we're perceiving unless there is a major deviation that grabs our attention like this. So what we're so what we're seeing by this testimony is there was no egregious behavior by those two that's a grabbing everyone's attention and saying everyone saw this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So to me, they were acting like they normally act. Well, and the testimony that we've seen, the video that we've seen of them at the bar and, and people who were interacting with them, nobody, everything seems normal. Everybody was yep. kind of getting along, having a good time. There was no arguing at the bar. There was no like. It, We've all been in those situations where there's a couple. You can tell there's something kind of up here, but, you know, they're they're getting along. There wasn't even that at all. Yeah, and, and there's one more thing there, Tony, too. Yeah. I Her behavior when she learned that he was hit and, and killed and, and all that was really incongruent with someone that was intentional. Mm -hmm. Because if you – I mean, people can go back and Google on your own – you know, some of these convicted murderers, whether it's manslaughter or anything else, that you can see how they acted when they found out about it. It's completely different. Yeah. Oh, you froze. Oh, I'm here. Okay. My screen's <laughs> <It's okay>. frozen. <laughs> 
But uh, so that that's what it comes down to to me is that you know her behavior after she found out what transpired. Yeah, that was incongruent with behavior of someone that was intentionally trying to do harm to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, by all accounts, you know, very just you know erratic, scared, frantic. Um, you know, just saying all sorts of things. But yeah, but again, it's not someone who's like, yeah, I did that shit, you know, <laughs> or, right? Or, or or fleeing the scene or something of that nature either. It's it's certainly been very uh, interesting to see some of that testimony and and those videos that we've seen uh, from the dash cam of that night. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.